hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Huh. All right. Well, first of all, first of all, these are forms. There are more. There are four different ones, but these are forms of adaptations, cell adaptations. So I think first we need to talk about just very briefly um, how why would a cell be forced to uh, adapt or undergo adaptation um, yeah, through stress. You stress have to stress the cell and these, this stress can be placed probably into two categories for the most part and that would be either by placing the cell in an inhospitable environment that's certainly going to stress the cell or asking the cell to do something it's um, currently incapable of doing. Either one of these types of uh, stressors, most, of the, most stress is said to be able to fall into one of these two categories. Now the, the, the cell, how it responds to this stress, it has basically two choices. Um, and I don't guess it's a choice, there's usually two outcomes. It either dies, the death of the cell is the outcome, or it adapts. And if it can adapt, and it does adapt, there are four mechanisms which it can choose from or it may, or it may employ to achieve this adaptation. And that is hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, and atrophy. So the two we're going to talk about here right now, I think everybody knows what atrophy is. I think the two we're going to talk about are hyperplasia and hypertrophy. And I see my battery lights flashing, so I'm going to have to plug this son of a bitch in while I'm on a roll. Isn't this a pain in the ass? One moment, please. All right. Having accomplished that, let's continue. So, four routes it can take or explore to, to achieve adaptation. Hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, or metaplasia. Metaplasia or, or atrophy. Uh, we're going to talk about the first two, hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Hypertrophy or hypertrophy, as the distinguished crowd refers to it. Um, I think everybody pretty much knows what that is. Hypertrophy, uh, the expansion of the, of the uh, you don't gain new cells or additional cells. So just very poor way of putting it. You don't actually gain any additional or new muscle. Uh, you just have the cells that you were born with, the cells that you have as, as an adult, not as you were born with. The cells that you have as an adult have actually just grown larger, expanded. That's hypertrophy, or hypertrophy as I say. That's hypertrophy. Hyperplasia is when you actually develop additional nuclei. You actually create new cells. And the source for material for these new cells has pretty much been established through many, many studies um, dating back to like 1993 uh, up to now. Uh, is the pool of satellite cells that the uh, these satellite cells are employed to make new muscle cells, which kind of sort of has a um, metaplasia ring to it, sort of. But who am I? It's still hyperplasia, they say. So metaplasia, by the way, is just um, when one cell turns into another type of cell. Uh, now, hyperplasia, which is like supposedly the, a lot of people believe it to be the holy grail of muscle building, that you're going to have literally more muscle. Well, as the years have progressed now, we realize, or we've come to understand, that this occurs in all mammals, and the additional nuclei that you create, the additional cells that you create, are yours forever. They will never diminish in number. Although, atrophy is actually a state of cannibalism where if this excess, these excess cells are not being utilized, then why should they 
why should they uh, bite into the resources and be part of the budget for uh, energy that the body has or, or nutri nutrients, et cetera, et cetera. And so they become food, the parts of the cells become food. So you can go way down this wormhole with this thing, but um, so let me try and keep it simple. You know, I always go off on these tangents. Just to keep it simple, hypertrophy, the expansion of what you already have, hyperplasia, you actually build new muscle, which they say is yours forever. Um, and that's what they say is muscle memory. Muscle memory, in fact, turns out to be that, uh, which is uh, considered when you return, you know, a person who was previously trained, uh, when they return to training again, they can pick it up and catch back up to where they were at a far, far faster rate than it took them the first time to get there. And now we, we attribute that to the muscle memory we attributed to what it is is the hyperplasia that was previously experienced that now a subject will have like in our case we're talking about building muscle uh, you know getting bigger getting gains we actually the subject has more muscle cells to work with to hypertrophy there are more to hypertrophy than the subject had initially when he first started the first time around uh, available to hypertrophy you know right in totality you have more muscle now and you're never going to lose that so even in the atrophy now when you go back to it you've got twice you know, i don't know i don't know how many more but you have more okay now we also have realized they'll come to realize uh, like i said this happens in all mammals well all mammals aren't injecting themselves with testosterone or anabolic agents okay in nature so if it occurs in nature it occurs in the mammal it can occur in you um we also now understand that hyperplasia, it happens. Hyperplasia happens. Like shit happens, hyperplasia happens. If you work out and you train hard enough and you uh, force cell adaptation, you will experience some hyperplasia over time. It doesn't matter if you're natural or enhanced. But if you are enhanced, then you're going to experience it to a greater degree, more readily. It's difficult to purposely, you know, we assume or always have believed, it's difficult to purposely set out about to um, experience um, hyperplasia. But, I mean, hell, some people think it's difficult to experience hypertrophy, which, or hypertrophy, which I don't see how difficult that is. I think it takes patience is what it takes. It takes time that it takes to, to build the muscle, or, you know, build the muscle. It takes as much time as it takes. It's not like an overnight thing. Uh, so I think people run out of patience more than anything nowadays. Um, but if, and plenty of people have looked into this, there are studies that have looked into this and investigated it, if there is a way you could particularly train to have the best chance at um, stimulating hyperplasia specifically, then we've come to believe that that is through loaded stretching of a muscle. So a lot of people have incorporated this in their workouts by either in between the sets, uh, loaded, loaded stretches between sets, or loaded stretches after um, you know, that exercise after you finish those work sets or whatever. So loaded stretches are just, just that. I know there are people that made fun of Alpha Destiny, for instance, because he had, didn't he have something on there talking about just the weight hanging off of his traps? He attributed that heavy weight to his development and that he, I think he was onto something there. Um, because uh, these studies, particularly look at the trapezius muscles, and they kind of seem to support that, that this loaded stretching is the best shot that you've got at doing anything training-wise, approach-wise, to experience more or, or to, to tilt 
the scales in your favor toward experiencing hyperplasia uh, other, instead of just hypertrophy. So loaded stretches, right? So if you were doing flies, for instance, you know, in between sets, you might, you know, lay down on the bench and have the weights all the way extended out and stretch deeply, deeply, deeply. Sounds risky, but loaded stretches. Uh, if you're doing shrugs, then in between sets, you would just pick the weight up and just have it, let it hang. It has to be a substantial weight for you. You know, it's all relative or subjective. Uh, loaded stretches, supposedly. But if you train long enough and hard enough, and how do you know if you train hard enough? Well, if you're experiencing gains, if you're experiencing hypertrophy, then you're probably, over time, it's a pretty good bet that you will experience hyperplasia to one degree or another. Uh, of course, if you're on some kind of an anabolic agent, it's going to be more so than if you weren't. But look, don't let that become a sticking point because if you happen to have, uh, well, there are other good things with anabolics too in, in that regard. Um, there are a lot of negative things potentially there, but there are a lot of good things too. One of the other good things is that the cells, the additional cells created, have a better affinity for binding with androgens. The receptors have a better affinity for binding with androgens. It's an enhanced thing. So it's, 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 we, it's, it's a lot to get into, and I don't know how important it all is or how much of a factor any of it should play into anybody's particular training or approach. But if you're curious about any of that bullshit, you can research it for yourself. There's a lot of stuff out there. It's not new. It's not new at all. There are uh, studies dating back to, like I said, 93. The most relevant studies start about in 1993 concerning hyperplasia. Uh, you know, I can give you a couple of places to start if you're interested. Let's see here. Let me see what I got up on the screen here. I can. Uh, effects of antibiotic steroids on muscle cells of strength trained athletes. That's a good study. And that is med.sci.sportsexerc.volume31, number 11. It's from 1999, 1528 through 1534. And they actually use muscle biopsies. And that's comparing uh, natural guys from enhanced, to enhanced guys. And the conclusion was intake antibiotic steroids and strength training induce an increase in muscle size by both hypertrophy and formation of new muscle fiber. Proposed that activation of satellite cells is a key process is enhanced and is enhanced by the steroid use. Uh, incorporation of satellite cells into pre-existing fibers to maintain a constant nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio seems to be a fundamental mechanism for muscle fiber growth. And of course it mentions the possibility of genetic differences between the two groups cannot be completely excluded. Anyway, if you want to get into that and read that, that's coming along, that's like a segue over from what I'm talking about, but it's nonetheless, this is the one. Here's where you start. I'll tell you the very first one that's extremely relevant, and that is from 1993, published in Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. Uh, the title is just simply, you just look up um, Skeletal Muscle Fiber Hyperplasia. Volume 25, issue 12. Skeletal muscle fiber hyperplasia. All right, I'm not going to go through all this bullshit. Just, just do a search. Skeletal muscle fiber hyperplasia. You'll see Antonio and uh, William J. Ganyea. Ganyea, forgive me for yeah, my mispronunciation of this gentleman's name. And that'll be a good place to start. Anyhow. Like I said, I don't see how much bearing it has or where it's that important. I never, 
considered any of this shit. I just went and lifted weights. And uh, I think if you probably learn about nutrition and the basics of weightlifting and training, it's going to be fine and good enough. People overthink this shit. And it seems to me most of the people that do most of the overthinking are people that aren't making progress. I think if you just, like Nike used to say, just do it, I think that's your best approach. But it's entirely up to you. You can clutter your brain with all this bullshit and see if it, if it pays off any at all or yields any dividend. Who knows? Anyway, that's it. And, of course, the this, this one, by the way... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, you'll see if you start to read it. Hyperplasia, it's not an unusual occurrence now. Like we used to think it was this um, impossible to obtain, you know, gold ring, but it's not that unusual. Uh, most of your gains are going to come from hypertrophy, but you will over time experience hyperplasia which will just compound on itself the longer you train and uh, you'll never lose that new that new uh, muscle formation there's new cells you'll never lose that they can still atrophy but they can also hypertrophy hypertrophy so that's it I don't know if it's worth putting this up. I don't know if it's telling you anything you don't already know, but what the hell. It's Saturday. I'm getting ready to go out and ride my bike. It looks great and chilly out. Hella Halloween party tonight at Robin Cherie's, if anybody's interested. And, of course, Swole Train's back in town. James Tiny Vest going all out uh, in my 70s regalia, my expanded 70s regalia for this Halloween party. And I'll see you cats there.